right, hey everyone, hey VJS Nation. Uh, my name is Cody Bonsky. Today I'm going to be teaching you about uh, false rapid full stack development with Nux3 and TRPC. So yeah, let's get into it. Um, first off, TRPC, why should you care? I included a little GIF here um, that's showcasing um, some of the syntax highlighting um, that occurs. On the bottom, we have a server route um, that's changing the return, the data from greedy, uh, sorry, text to greeting. And immediately in our client, uh, it's giving us a TypeScript there. And so we're gonna kind of dig into that, um, this beautiful developer experience that occurs between the back end and front end to allow for quick dev development. So first, let's just look at the problem that we're solving. Um, traditionally, in you'd build a type search uh, backend using something like Express. Um, here, we just have a simple interface user that has the username and email, and it's exposing the endpoint get user. Now, get user is just returning a user, static data, username, email. Now on the front end, oh, on the front end, um, we first off have to explicitly type this data. We're just assuming like this fetch request is going to return the user type. And then we can uh, access that data within our, um, our templates. So again, here we're just accessing the data and we're just saying, all right, data username, data email. Now, things change. The backend team decided they don't care about the username anymore. I don't know why, they just did. And, and now, user is only an email. So again, we're sending that back in this get user endpoint. And the front end hits that endpoint and they say, hey, where'd it go? You know, you're trying to access username. And um, depending on how you're expecting this data, how you're interacting with it, it might error or just not show. You're going to get inconsistencies um, that you probably don't want. And this is, you know, a simple communication problem, but it happens all the time. Front end and back end just becomes desynced, and um, TRPC is here to help with that. So. Tier procedure to the rescue, um, providing a type safe dev experience for rapid full stack development. Here's this GIF again, um, just to showcase exactly what we're expecting. First things first, uh, it's not very, it's not too complicated. Just remember, you know, here um, I'm showcasing how you're consuming a tier PC endpoint here on the top right. Um, we're using the use Nuxt app. Um, composable to get the TRPC client, um, which is calling the dot hello use query. If we look into our actual network console within our browser, um, it's just a URL. It's a, the TRPC server is still just exposing some HTTP uh, endpoints. Um, but it uses a bit of TypeScript magic to provide that client to server um, validation that we're going to look into further. I also just wanted to show this. Um, I wasn't really sure where else to put it in the presentation. But you, it, there's this neat little feature where you can just click into the um, queries that you build, the procedures. So here, we're just clicking into hello on the front end and it immediately sends you to the back end. Um, this is nice. You don't have to search through your project for a specific string um, URL pattern, something like that. Um, just one of those little niceties that comes with TRPC. So we're going to first look into um, this hello route. Um, we're gonna dig deeper and deeper into each specific aspect of TRPC. Um, and again, I just wanted to express like TRPC is not the entirety of the backend. We're still using a lot of Nuxt's uh, server features, API features. 
um, TRPC is more just like an extension um, to the beauty of Nuxt. Um, but it's also pretty nice because if you write it appropriately, you can really separate out the TRPC logic to allow it to be interchangeable depending on your backend's um, requirements. So whether that's Express or Next or any other backend framework, um, TRPC should be interchangeable. One thing I do want to mention though is TRPC, the T stands for TypeScript. Um, so the backend has to be TypeScript. Sorry, that's, that's, that's not flexible. So let's look at the um, client and server connection. So here on the front, we have our index.view file um, that is calling the TRPC client's hello procedure. And then it's doing the use query, which is the equivalent of an HTTP get request. Um, and here it's actually passing some input. It's this little dictionary, um, the key of text um, with the value of Vue.js nation. Um, and then here in our backend, as you can see here, this is just a server API, um, API route um, with this TRPC wildcard. It's actually now taking, um, we're gonna, so at first there's this hello procedure, it's using the public procedure. Um, it's taking this input. So in our case, uh, we have text. So it's using Zod for input validation. And so right off the bat, it needs to be text that we're passing our use query. If I were to change that to just note or greeting, anything else in our dictionary up here, um, we'd see a type error. And then, um, then it's calling the TRPC query method, which is grabbing, accepting our input from Zod, and then it's returning um, this greeting, this object with greeting key alongside um, this like dynamic string we decided. So here it's hello and then the input text, if there is text. It also, if you look in Zod, there's also null. So in the case of null, it would just be world. Um, now let's look at another key part of TRPC, which are routers. Um, so a router can have any number of procedures and child routers. Um, you can separate and merge routers depending on what the use of your router may be. Um, and I'll show you later, but eventually we're going to be getting into like um, a, a bit more, um, like here we have our, our user routers that require authenticated users versus just like public routers that anybody can use. Um, within each router, uh, um, you can use different types of procedures, different types of queries, you can do mutations. They're very, it's very flexible. Um, that's a benefit of TRPC, um, but I could see that being um, confusing if you're new to it as well. But the key is after you create and extend and have all of these different routers, you need to merge it back into this base app router. And so here on the bottom, I have this app router that is taken in both our user router and our, I called it action router. Um, and then it merged into the app router. Um, the key here though, that you need to remember is by, by having many routers, it will impact the namespace. So here we can see the namespace is no longer dot client. It's actually gonna be dot action and then dot hello because of the action router. And so again, we replace the hello, it's dot action and then dot hello. And I'm gonna, here's the router that, oh, well, sorry, I don't have hello here, uh, but it would be dot action. And then if I had an additional route or uh, procedure inside, it would be, um, that's how the namespacing of like the client to server interaction occurs. Next, we have middleware. Um, TRPC middleware is super neat. Actually, it's probably my favorite part at the moment. 
Um, it allows you to wrap like pretty interesting logic and chain specific logic uh, within the um, within your endpoints within your uh, tier PC functions. Um, but something really important to to remember is it's first in and last out. So if you're using many middlewares along within your procedure. Um, the last middleware to run before the procedure is the first middleware to run after the procedure. Um, so in this GIF, I have a console log middleware. Um, as you can see, it's calling the T, um, which is just like the TRPC um, object that we kind of chain everything else off of. And it's calling the middleware method that takes in context and next. And within it is a console.log in middleware, um, just express, you know, function call. And if you see here, if you look down on the bottom of the GIF, um, uh, sorry, actually, and then I'm actually creating this log procedure, which is um, just the base procedure that's using, um, this new middleware. And I'm actually swapping out the public procedure with the log procedure. And now on, uh, so I, I swap that out in my router. And then I actually, you don't see it here, but I go over to my client, I refresh the window, and you can see here we're in the middleware. So now every time this hello query is ran, um, the middleware will be ran as well. Um, and so this is, really powerful. Um, I'm going to show another example here. Um, this is very, so in this example, uh, we're extending, we're creating a timed procedure. And this is running the console.log time, um, awaiting the result um, of the next function, and then a console.time end. And again, we swap the public procedure within our help, uh, hello uh, router or route. And um, now when I refresh my client and you see, it's creating a time, it's giving us the time of that particular query, um, which was like super simple, but uh, really powerful um, just for debugging purposes. Um, like it's really endless. Um, but on that note, I do want to explain procedures a little further. I noticed I've, been, I've kind of glossed over it, but they are very important. Um, the procedure is um, this kind of primitive that we really just base everything else off of. It's kind of the entry point that allows us to accept input um, as well as giving back output. Um, the beauty of the procedure is it's, it's also where we um, do all of our validation. So we can use Zod for input validation. So that's... Um, user to, to client, or sorry, client to server. Uh, but then we can also do output validation. And so that, that means, um, you know, server back to client. And it took me a minute to realize why, why you would want to do output validation. Um, you know, that should all take place on your server already. Uh, but I, there's a video on YouTube that was mentioning how output validation is great when you're consuming, you might be consuming a third party API and you, you pull in their data. It allows you to pull in their data, kind of clean it up a little bit and then send it back to your client, um, which is, could be very powerful as well. You, maybe there's certain credentials you don't want to leak, um, things of that nature. Um, the procedures uh, also ex expose the dot query method, um, which is uh, the equivalent of an HTTP get request. Um, and it also exposes the dot mutation uh, method, which is the equivalent of a post request. There, I think it's worth mentioning that they are essentially the exact same. Um, they're fully interchangeable. That's really the only difference is whether um, you want the requests, uh, sorry, I can't think of the name, but whether you want it to be a post or a get. Everything else functionally is the exact same. Um, 
So now let's look in a context. Uh, I, I kind of briefly mentioned it here in the middleware, how it accepts the context as well as the next, next function. Um, the context is something that is avail available in every API route. Um, so key areas you might want to use this is for like your auth session um, or your database connection. And uh, so something for here we have, for example, I'm passing the, um, I'm passing in Prisma and session. Um, and now every time you, uh, a procedure is called a, um, this data is, is there as well. And so within your procedure, um, within like your input or your output, you can manage this. And so we'll, we'll go into that uh, soon. I just wanna mention here, we're also exporting the type of context. Um, and I'll explain why later as well for that. Again, TypeScript magic, that's what makes all of this work. Um, so here is an auth uh, middleware example. Um, we're bringing in this new context that was just defined before um, through our type of create context uh, function. And now we're initializing our TRPC object using the dot context. And now that gives us our, con our custom context uh, anywhere we want. Um, so I created this is auth middleware um, that's, that is able to check your session and just verify like, hey, is this user logged in? Um, if they're not, it's gonna throw a TRPC error with the appropriate status code. And um, otherwise it'll, the, the request will flow on as, as expected for authenticated user. Um, now that we have this middleware, we are gonna create this protected procedure that we're gonna run all of our queries and mutations through. And now here's um, our API endpoint, our API endpoint example. Um, specifically, uh, we, I created a protected router um, and this protected router gets comments um, and it's running uh, the protected procedure that we just created in the previous slide. It's running its query method, destructuring the input and context. And now it's able to use that context to call uh, Prisma um, to, to get all of the, the comments, um, which is pretty neat. Um, again, just like an authenticated route, um, but it's all just really built in. And again, it's type safe. Um, which is huge. This will still, you'll still get the type safety that's occurring on the front end. Oh, uh, one last thing is this create context um, is being passed into our create Nuxt API handler, um, which is the create Nuxt API handler is um, a helper function from the TRPC Nuxt module. Uh, that I believe his name is Wob Soriano created. And, and so this is kind of the glue that, that pulls in Nuxt and TRPC together. And it's also passing our app router. Um, yeah. And so how, do, how, how does this all, how does, how, how does this all work? You know, lots of JavaScript or TypeScript, lots of functions happening here. Um, remember the key feature that we're working towards is the type safety. We want to be able to comfortably and confidently write within our client and access data and manipulate data, knowing that our server is going to be providing that. Um, and the way it does that is through this export type app router um, of which is equal to the type of app router. And now if you remember from the router slide a while back, um, all of the routes contain the procedures that we're using, which is then um, merged into a single router and that router is called app router. And so this, this is how it man TRPC manages the types 
And by using the export type, not export app router, but export type app router, it's actually able to safely um, share that, that information anywhere within your project. And one last thing um, is uh, here, th this is again, some of the, the help from TRPC Nuxt module. Um, we are passing this app router type into a client, into a plugin, a Nuxt plugin. Um, as you can see here, we just had to define Nuxt plugin and it's taking in our app router type and it's creating a client. And then um, if anyone's familiar with like provide and inject, um, I believe that's like how Pino works, um, is it then returns a provide of this client that we then eventually call in our index.view or anywhere on the client side of, of Nuxt, which gives us access to all of um, TRPC, all of the goodness of TRPC. And so, yeah, that's it. Um, hope you enjoyed. I, I know it's pretty deep. There's a lot of stuff going on with TRPC, but I, I really recommend just playing with it and getting your hands dirty. Um, once you start seeing like this end-to-end -end type safety and realize how nice it is, um, I don't think you'll ever go back, uh, honestly. A um, couple thank yous, Wob, Soriano, TRPC Nux creator. Awesome dev. Um, this guy, CCC, I think it's Chris something. He has honestly the, the best tier PC video out right now on YouTube. It's how tier PC actually works. And he, he really dives deeply. Uh, and foo for the slide. Just love this software and my wife, of course. Um, hope you enjoyed. I love that. Just all the shout outs, all the good feels. Um, oh, totally. Question. 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 So, oh, okay. Well, we're we're done. We're uh, we're just gonna keep moving on. Um, no questions. <laughs> or maybe we do. Oh, maybe. Sorry I about have that. No questions for you. Yeah, <laughs> just trying to leave. But I mean, this does this does have to go with next nation. Were there Sorry? trees? Were there trees with Next Nation? Oh yeah, there were trees and uh, bears. That's that's why I disappeared for a while. I I feel like I I heard a rumor that you're by a beach, and I'm like, dude, dude. Okay, basically, y'all, what I'm what I'm trying to lead to is Cody <laughs> just like presents from like the dopest places in the world. That's that's all I wanted all of you to know to start with. And I love that he also gives everybody the warm fuzzies with all the shout outs. So now to the <laughs> yeah, other I, questions. I, I wanted to show you <laughs> everyone the ocean, but I, I was afraid that somebody would be mowing their lawn or something right when this started. <laughs> so decided it was best to be inside today. <laughs> I dig it though, I dig it. All right, so question number one. Windows, Mac, or other? Uh, um, so yeah, I'm Mac, tried and true, big, big Mac, right. Mac guy, um, big fan of the M1. Um, not to say, like, I, I am excited for something to replace it, though. <laughs> Just, <laughs> yeah. I get that. I get that. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, more questions about your talk. Um, what are some use cases you've seen people use for TRPC for? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, so, I, I mean, end-to-end -end type safety is huge, right? Um, I think that's one of the bigger reasons. Um, but it's also really good for individuals or small teams that need to interact between the front end and back end really quickly. Um, like I said, you, like as I showed in the beginning, you can just kind of click into your function, boom, right into the endpoint. You can you can mess around with the types. You get you can do whatever you want, um, and that's kind of where I see TRPC thriving. Is it's great for small teams. All right, thank you. Uh, what does TRPC provide? Any runtime validations, or is it all about the types for use at development time? 
Um, I believe, yeah. So the runtime validation um, comes from Zod. That that's <clears throat> that's when you bring in Zod is um, for the input validation and and things of that. Otherwise, you you are limited to you know the the nature of TypeScript, which um, uh, yeah, I don't believe has runtime validation. But I could be wrong there. I, I'm you know, there's definitely we're all learning. Yeah, but you probably exactly. have a lot of experience with it, so I'm rolling with it. All right. Cool. Do you have any advice for someone that's familiar with GraphQL uh, to get started with TRPC? Mm. So, I, I mean, just start, right? I, I think that's the key is um, uh, the TRPC Nux module has some pretty good documentation. Um, and so it just, you could probably get a project with Nux TRPC up and running and probably like two minutes. Um, and then, yeah, just use this website. Uh, there's some great, uh, just like information out there about TRPC. It's really, I know it's grown tremendously over the last year. And again, this is, um, it doesn't necessarily care what your backend is. So long as it's TypeScript, um, you can integrate it. So there's plenty of tutorials out there, even outside of the Nuxt and Vue ecosystem that I think could apply to your use case. Sweet. Thank you. And uh, is there like a time frame where you suggest that somebody implements uh, TRPC when they're developing? Um, uh, yeah, right when you start. <laughs> Why not? You know, I, I think that's where you're, that's probably going to be your best bet. Um, is just, yeah, right when you start. I, I, I don't see any reason in delaying it. Um, okay. Yeah. Sweet. Last question. How does Tiers PC compare to, say, a monorepo where backend and front end are shared model models? Wow. Can't talk today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, honestly, monorepos are something that's on my radar, and I, I haven't explored them fully. So I don't know how much of the typing they, they share. Um, so unfortunately, I, I can't I can't answer that. I'm assuming they're asking that question because there is a bit of like type safety that's occurring between the two. Um, but I, so I, I'm not sure. All right, we're given ideas for the next talks. We're just like yeah. you know trying to like give ideas. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Cody, for joining us today. And y'all, make sure you go follow Cody, whatever direction it's supposed to be in. I never know where I am on the screen, but. Go follow Cody <laughs> and thanks, Cody. Cool. Thanks, everyone.